Solomon was blessed by Jehovah with wisdom and riches beyond anything any human had ever possessed. He was God's faithful and wise servant, at least for a time. There were no kings of his equal. And yes, the Queen of Sheba traveled from a distant land to see for herself Solomon's splendid kingdom, and she queried him with many questions that were in her heart, and he answered them all. But Solomon's wisdom and his kingdom did not last. God had warned Solomon not to multiply wives for himself, and the law of God specifically forbade the Israelites from intermarriage with the demon-worshipping people of the neighboring lands. But Solomon didn't listen. He married 700 princesses from among the Egyptians, Hittites, Amorites, Moabites, and Edomites. Gradually, they inclined Solomon's heart away from following Jehovah. Even though Solomon had built Jehovah's magnificent temple on Mount Zion, he then began to construct temples dedicated to the disgusting demon gods his many wives worshipped, including Ashtoreth, the sex goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the disgusting god of the Ammonites. In time, the Israelites worshipped these gods and others, and even sacrificed their children to them. Solomon became what we call an apostate. For all of his wisdom, he acted foolishly and brought disaster upon Israel. Solomon wrote most of the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. Amazingly, even though the king became an apostate in his later life, God permitted Solomon's writings to remain as part of the Bible's collection of 66 sacred books. It would seem that Solomon's story is a cautionary tale for all of God's servants. Paul summed it up best. So let the one who thinks he is standing beware that he does not fall. The same God who blessed Solomon with knowledge, wisdom, and vast riches lives today and forever. The same demons that were worshipped in various forms in ancient times still exist too. And everyone is influenced by both God and the demons. In many ways, the Watchtower organization is like Solomon. God blessed the leaders of the organization with Bible knowledge and wisdom. No organization had ever taught the truth before, at least not in modern times. The great church systems have been exposed as mere daughters of the symbolic prostitute known as Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots. Take note that the historical account states, Now the Queen of Sheba heard the report about Solomon in connection with the name of Jehovah, so she came to test him with perplexing questions. 1 Kings 10 verse 1. Just as Solomon's wisdom and fame were in connection with the name of Jehovah, so too the Watchtower. God's name is emblazoned upon the header of every Watchtower magazine. The Watchtower Bible Society has faithfully restored the name of God to the book that bears his name, making the New World Translation available in over 200 languages. The Watchtower's influence has been extended to the farthest ends of the earth, and with it, the name of God has been published in over 1,000 languages via pamphlets and tracts. The organization has even conferred the name of Jehovah upon its millions of followers so that Jehovah's Witnesses are widely known throughout the world. From its humble storefront beginnings, the Watchtower has grown to become a wealthy corporation. Its leaders may not have gold, silver, and precious stones such as Solomon possessed, but they certainly live like kings, far better than many of their subjects. Like Solomon, the leading men of the Watchtower have not listened to Jehovah. They have become apostates, infecting the entire organization. They have allowed demon-worshipping masons to become influencers. They have practiced a form of child sacrifice by shielding pedophiles from prosecution and persecuting their victims. And they have committed spiritual prostitution, the kind they hypocritically condemn, by aligning themselves with Satan's united nations. Interestingly, Jehovah did not punish Solomon, even though he became infuriated with him. Instead, God ripped the kingdom away from Solomon's son. In the same way, the apostates among Jehovah's Witnesses continue to thrive and enjoy the kingdom's wealth and prestige. However, they should take note that just as Jesus told the Jews in his day, something greater than Solomon was among them. In the same way, 
something greater than the earthly organization exists and will be among us in a way that they do not know or expect. Did not the wisest man who ever lived warn us of this very thing when he said, But know this, if the householder had known at what hour the thief would come, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also keep ready, because at an hour that you do not think likely, the Son of Man is coming.